Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. And it is a gorgeous February day. It's like going to be 65 degrees. I don't think we know what's going on right now because there are flowers blooming, trees are blooming. It feels like spring and it's February, but that's okay because the Lord's in charge. And so I'm excited for you guys to meet Meredith Cop with Robins on Roan and a local artist, Laurie Norris. So thanks for coming on the podcast, guys. How are you all this morning? Good. Okay. Doing great. Thank thanks you. for having us. Yeah. Oh, well. Yay. So for people listening, um, my wife, Carly, love, love, loves Meredith Cop. She's like her best friend, she says, and she just adores you. Aww. And so you're in great company. Thank you for coming on the podcast, best friend of Carly. I'm excited to hang out with you. <laughs> well, next to Carly, I guess your second best. Mm. <laughs> so um, tell us a little bit. First, Johnson City Living, I'm going to hit you both. Like, what is your favorite thing, Lori, about Johnson City? Oh, wow. Um, probably the small town feel. We lived in Kingsport for about 20-something years, and so okay. we moved here about three or four years ago. Gotcha. And um, it's a great combination of a little bit of culture and, you know, re- great restaurants and active downtown, uh, but you still get that small-town feeling with good people. Yeah, it is special, special. Miss Meredith, what's your favorite thing about Johnson City? Well, I grew up in Georgia, and I moved to Johnson City um, right in time for high school, which is where I met my high school sweetheart and husband of 22 years. So I kind of love Johnson City just because it So Kent it is your favorite thing Kent. in Johnson City. He's the best thing about Johnson City. <laughs> Scoring some big-time brownie <laughs> points. It is February, the month of love, so yes. I'm glad you guys are Last still day, in Last got it in. That's awesome. Okay, so you grew up in Georgia, mm-hmm. grew up, we'll use lightly, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then moved here. And so how long have you been at Johnson City again now? A long time. So at some point I have to transition and say that I'm officially from, I don't know where the line is to say you're officially from Johnson City. Yes. But I've been here since the big snow of 93, so it's been it's long been enough. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Is that 30 years? It's close, yeah. That's this 30 year, years. Yeah, it's probably snowed in February. It snowed, it could be snowed 30, spring break. Oh, of. It's almost 30 years to the day. That's amazing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But we know your heart's still kind of Georgian if you ever go to a... Her parents' house for a Georgia football game, it will change your life. So, so where, you, where in Georgia did you grow up? Carrollton. Okay, because I grew up in Atlanta. Oh, oh look at this. Yeah. We're making Georgia friends. There you go. So you grew up in Atlanta. <laughs> Johnson City. So we're in Johnson City. <laughs> Johnson City, Georgia Living Podcast. So you grew up in in Atlanta, mm-hmm. and then then when did, how did you make it to Kingsport? Um, a little bit of a roundabout way. So... Um, after I got married, my husband and I moved to, well, we lived in Athens for a while because we were both in graduate school there. And then after that, we moved to Richmond, Virginia, where, um, he got his first big job, you know, that was a big move. And we started our family there and then, um, we moved to Kingsport and we're there and raised our family there. Nice. And then recently moved to Johnson city, like I said, about four years ago. Well, full circle, I have a brother born in Athens with my parents. My dad was doing his postdoc work there, and so look at that. It's all Georgia. We're all Georgia fans here. <laughs> so I lived there four years. I think I was little. We grew, I grew up here when I got here. I was five. Okay, so I'm going to transition to Robins on Roan. You yes. are the owner of um, a little the, establishment on Roan Street. Hence it, the name. Hence the name, and... It's got two birds on the roof. They're robins. They're, they're permanent. Yes. And they're huge. They're huge. And they're cool. They are. They're like a mini landmark. They they're are. like, now where is your shop? And I say, it's on Roan. It has robins on the roof. Is that where the name came from? Well, the original owner, her name is Robin. Right. So she had the robins put on. And so then when I bought the shop, the question was, do you change the name? No, I dropped an apostrophe. There's a song wrong, doesn't sound It like doesn't. I, uh, I like it. Life-size version of myself on the roof felt a little <laughs> weird. So we left the birds. We left the name. And yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So maybe in the future, there could be a wooden, <laughs> wooden Meredith no, up there someday. No, no not going to happen. You're no. sticking with Robin's on them. Yeah. 
Did you grow up wishing to own a framing shop? No, I did not. Funny enough, that wasn't a long time ago. Um, <laughs> but I did go to college and uh, majored at my degrees in interior design. And full circle, when I was in um, college, one of my professors was Martha Mays. And if you've been in Johnson City, she was like an interior design powerhouse. Oh. And her studio was where the shop is now. Really? And she had us had do student study days, and she would have us come to the shop, and our studying was just cleaning up the shop <laughs> and organizing her wallpaper. Get out. So you yep. worked in that shop yes. in college. In college. And then a few years later, because you're still few. like 28, yes. um, so probably five years later, you mm -hmm. wound up buying the shop yes. and you're living there. Mm -hmm. or living there. I don't live there. there. Yeah. yeah. You just live down the street. I live near there, but yeah. Yes, you do live near there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. Yeah. When did the Lord say, hey, uh, I'm hooking you up with a shop you used to work in? Like, did you realize that when you were getting ready to buy it or like you well, had the so thought? I, um, I have always done hands-on artsy things since I've been a full-time parent since I've had kids. And um, I started designing earrings in um, during COVID. Mm -hmm. And I sell them to lots of local shops. Yep. Boomtown. Um Mill Spring and Jonesboro. Yeah. Yeah. Robin's on Roan. So you went in there. And one day I went to restock my earrings and Robin was like, hey, you should buy my shop. And I said, hey, let's see if I like it. And it is just enough interior design. It gets my like creative juices going. I shot at her for several months. She, um, she did my, what's it called? Training, apprenticeship. Apprenticeship. Yes. Framing. And I really like the process of framing. It's very What's your methodical. favorite part about framing? Because people... Designing. Like, the favorite part is working with... You don't like cutting the frames? Well, I like doing it, but the best part is meeting with the um, clients and seeing what they bring in. We also have tons of artists, local artists that mm -hmm. we get to meet and be exposed to. So, yeah. Seeing what walks in the door, that's my favorite part. Because yeah. you never know. You just never know. You never know. What's the craziest thing you've framed? The cra well, okay, so the craziest thing was probably a used cigar, a half-smoked cigar from the UT. What was the big UT win this year? They um, beat Alabama. Alabama. It was from UT Alabama. Yes. He brought we in a smoked cigar. Like half of it. Yep. Like, a, I mean, I'm assuming it was a good, I don't know how far you smoked down a cigar, but it was like this much that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For and, our listeners, and it was about it. four inches. <laughs> it's probably half. How far do you smoke now? Anyway, smoke. it was from it was for his dad because mm. his dad had been smoking the cigar at the game. They were there. It was a big win. And so. his son had the wherewithal to say, "Hey, I'm going to pick this up." Yes. Because it's going to be sentimental. Yes. And so his for, dad must be a huge Vols fan. Yes, they'd been going to games for years, and this was a big yeah. deal. So. I think um, didn't UT beat Georgia this year? No. I think so. Yeah. I 100% think, so. think that is I think wrong. we'll have to get... Mitch, can you get online? And find it was that? a win. We were <laughs> undefeated for two years. That's true. You did. Beat us. I'm just kidding. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, going back. And you were the national champions. So I that's know. awesome. I know. Georgia's kicking butt. Okay. Enough of you and Robin's Bye. on round. Let's Thank get you. to Miss Lori. So tell me about artists, like your passion for art. And there's... 4,000 different ways to express yourself artistically. How do you choose to? to well, it's kind of evolved yourself. over the years. And like um, Meredith, I've always kind of done something. Um, I started out in, in art and design and ended up in education. Um, but while I was teaching art, I also did a lot on the side. And I did everything from pottery to jewelry making to painting, um, I would do little art shows around towns and travel a little bit. Um, but more recently, I've just gotten into the painting. Mm -hmm. And it could be just because I have the time and, um, you know, our kids are gone. And, you know, it's just kind of I've got a little bit of a, you know, push under my wings, I guess you could say. So um, I've really enjoyed it and, and kind of dived right in and. Had a lot of fun with it, so that's, awesome. that's how I've ended up with the oil painting. Tell me where your you said your kids are going. Where are they in the world? Oh, they are all over the place. We have two two sons and a daughter, and the two boys are out in Utah. They oh, live wow. in 
the Salt Lake City area. Uh-huh. And our daughter just recently moved to Australia. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's a big adventurer. So That's cool. She moved in January. She'll be there for about a year. Neat. Now, as a child, did you realize like I did, that I drew a stick figure for a person, and I'm not very good at the art. And so <laughs> did you, like, just realize, hey, I've got a little talent here? Like, I don't think I realized it, but I always enjoyed it. I was surrounded by it. My father was in design. Um, my brothers and sisters all ended up in some kind of design field. So I think I was just always around it, and mm-hmm. I never thought that this is a talent or anything like that. I just enjoyed it. Do you feel like, and this is just me riffing a little bit, but do you feel, I think we all have some sort of artistic ability in us, like whether it's putting a pillow on a couch that looks pretty or whatever it might be, or, you know, a color on a wall or seeing something. I think we're in tune with that on some level. Would you agree or like, do you feel like, um, because I know I can't draw, but I like, I can see a house and go, okay, we could rip this wall out and put a new kitchen in and like do that kind of stuff. And then I feel like that's a expression there. Or a frame for Meredith. She can... <laughs> Definitely. Everyone has something. Yeah. And I think you know it when it makes you feel good and it yeah. seems right. Like you might put a great outfit together or, you know, or like you said, you know, can envision what a remodel might look like yeah. in a home or something like that. So Yeah, I think and may, I think a lot of people maybe um, were told, oh, you can't draw a column. <laughs> like, <laughs> those are stick figures. Can you draw, Meredith? Are you able to draw? I wish I could. I really wish I could. Yeah. But okay, I even thought, like, is that something you can develop over time? But I just don't feel like – my daughter is very – like, she's always been instinctually. Like, she's just good at it. Yeah. It's frustrating. It is. It's so frustrating. <laughs> my mother is a wonderful artist. She does watercolors and can draw, and she's just great. And I'm like, I cannot do it. Um, I can draw trees. I think that, yeah, it definitely is an innate um, characteristic, yeah. but it's also a skill that you mm-hmm. can hone mm-hmm. and continue to get better. But if it doesn't bring you joy, then if it only brings fine, you frustration, yeah, <laughs> that's right. something else. Don't too. do it anymore. <laughs> Yes, life's too short if it's just frustrating. Right. So tell us about how you honed your skills and how you like grew up in the art world and how did you get to where you are? Yeah, I think just always doing something, mm-hmm. you know, always, you know, I had like a furniture design business for a while, hand painted furniture. So I was into that. Um, like I said, jewelry making. So I was always doing something that was creative, used my creative mind, used some kind of skills. Um, I didn't always maybe sketch or anything like Mm -hmm. some artists do. I do now for my paintings, but, um, hadn't always, you know, kept a, like a journaling sketchbook or anything like that. Um, but I think just always doing something. Yeah. Not being afraid just to. Yeah. Just try something new. Yeah. Like, oh, it's not going to be perfect. It'll be fine. We'll Mm -hmm. figure it out. Or it's not great at all. We'll just (laughs) start all over. It's not a big deal. Are you able to sculpt too? I do a little, I used to do a little bit of hand building. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like sculptors just blow me away. I mean, you will go to, you know, I can see these unbelievable sculptures. I'm like, that is just amazing on how people do that. And then back in the day, they did it out of marble and it's all perfect. And just, (laughs) it's just, that's nuts. I think um, our phones are distracting us now because I think there would be a lot it more. It probably would. It's, I mean, how much yeah. energy could you, you could probably yeah. sculpt something. Instead of watching other a, people right. do it, if we just. If you just get off TikTok, you could have sculptures <laughs> of yourself on your building That's, with the robins watching over them, feeding them. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much fun. Okay. So um, you, you're you doing painting now. And so I got to see. By the way, I went into Robin's on Rhone yesterday with Carly, and your shop is fantastic. Thank you. I mean, it is beautiful. Thank you. I was just blown away with it. You guys, if you're listening, you need to swing by, check out the Robin's, go in, check out all the things there. So tell us a little bit about your shop and like, because it's not just art, it's not just framing, that you have all kinds of stuff in there. So we have, so there's the um, gallery and shop. And so we have all of our art is local artists. Um, and then we have handmade goods. So we have jewelry, we have leather goods, we have handmade cards. Um, so it's all focused on just the local talent in this area because we have a ton of talent in this yeah, we area. Do. We really do. Um, so we really focus on that. Um, so the gallery and shop, it's pretty and it smells good. It and smells great. You can always get a really unique gift. So if you're just looking for something unique um that's the shop and then we have the framing yeah 
gallery. So is the framing kind of the main driver of revenue for you? Yes. Yes. The framing allows us to have the shop. Um, the shop is, yeah. Yeah. The framing is the mainstay. So, but then people come in the shop and be like, oh, you frame. Yeah. I've been looking for a framer. And they're, all of a sudden, they're like, what can I frame? Right. And then people come in to frame, and they're like, oh, my word, you have gorgeous art. And I'm like, they're local artists, and da-da-da. So, yeah. they go hand in hand. That's awesome. They feed each other. Yeah. And like me feeding the birds. <laughs> <laughs> You're out feeding your robins. That's yeah. right. They're yeah. feeding each other. Look at that. Um, <laughs> this is so much fun. Okay. So, um. You're having an open house at your at your place. It's this Friday. This Friday. Like, I think the we're third, getting this released today. Released like if you're listening to the podcast, it's today. It's March third. Yes, this evening. This evening. Yes. What time? Four to six. It's going to be a meet and greet, so you can meet Lori. And she is a lovely person, so you should go run and see her. See all of her art. And all of her art. I got to see it yesterday. It is beautiful. It's Thank really you. cool. What inspired this kind of? I mean, because there's there's like a, a I guess a feel to it all. What kind of inspired you recently with your paintings? Hmm. I don't know. I just kind of go with what what feels right. Um, <clears throat> I started painting again about a year and a half ago, so um, it's evolved over the year. I started out rough, like you do when you've been off the horse for a while, I guess you could say. And um, So it took me a year to kind of get warmed up, but I feel like I'm getting a little bit in a groove now. So That's cool. Um, but I just do what feels right, what I like. Tell the listeners a little bit about some of the art that they, if they were to come in tonight to Robins on Rome, um, what they would be seeing. Well, most of the artwork that I do is, um, I would maybe call it kind of contemporary still life. Mm -hmm. It's um, bright and bold and um, a lot of kind of close up of fruits and patterns and bold, bright colors. So Yeah, it was, it was neat. And I mentioned like a Warhol kind of feel to it. I thought it was really cool. So definitely come and check it out. How long is the open house going to be, Meredith, again? It's from 4 to 6. 4 to 6. Yes, we'll have beverages and snacks. and. Can anybody come? Anybody can come. Everybody is welcome. Everybody? Everybody. Awesome. Well, you heard that here. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about um, something. Are you working on anything else besides just these paintings currently? Do you have any other media that you're kind of like, oh, I want to explore this in the future? or? Um, no, I've been just mainly working on the paintings. I have dabbled a little recently in fabric design. Oh. So something cool. I'm kind of playing around with, see what happens there. I don't even know how you could design fabric. That's pretty Like cool. designing the patterns for fabrics? Yes. So would you I love that wallpaper too. Will you yes. do wallpaper too? Yes. Thing? We're gonna do a collaborative. Okay. I like this. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about how that e that process even happens. Like do you paint something and then you hand it to somebody and they like say, Okay, we're gonna digitally image this and put it into fabric or how does that even actually work? um it's funny i took a pattern making course in the fall mm -hmm. um so my real job that i do during the day is uh, is i'm a designer um for an education an ed tech company oh. um so i have a lot of i do a lot of design kind of digital design um for online and so i'm kind of combining those two skills and so what i do is i'll paint something i'll scan it um, into the computer and vectorize it and make a pattern out of it. That's cool. Yep. So it's it's been really fun. I wonder how they had to do it like years ago, you know, like before we even. It's all like, like screen. Like, yeah. like, Is that how they did yeah. it? Yeah. Like, like an Hermes scarf or something. Like it's got some crazy pattern on it. I don't even know how they used to, because they're, they're, they've been around for hundreds of years, right? And Yeah, I can't I imagine because the process do. is easy now. Right. You just go, oh, yeah. I'll scan it in, vectorize it, da -da 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 -da, push a button and it, 3D prints it, and there's a well, made a dress. Look at me, look, look at me now. You know? But, uh, yeah, so it's crazy to think about how things are evolving. And what do you see, like, where's that going? Where would you put your fabric? In? You know, I have no idea, but I just thought paper. this would be kind of cool to combine these two things because I really enjoyed the pattern design, and I thought, well, maybe I can somehow incorporate my paintings into it. Oh, yeah. Um, so playing around with it, we'll see, like I said, see where it goes. I like this. Something new. Norris Cop fabrics and wallpaper coming, <laughs> there you coming go. to you soon <laughs> in a Target near you. <laughs> that would be fun. Why would you want to decorate or like make wallpaper? What's inspiring about that for you, Mary? I just love wallpaper. Oh, my goodness. I love wallpaper. I think it's really cool. I 
every house I've owned, I've had one just really bold wallpaper. Even like when wallpaper hadn't made it swing back, mm -hmm. I had this tiny little hallway with birds on the wallpaper. Look at that. So I love wallpaper. Yeah. And I have seen some artists develop uh, their own lines yeah. and make it into some big stores, and that's a big deal. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm all about it. Go for it. We're, we'll talk more. Okay. <laughs> I think we just had an inspiration here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I was watching, I was at Lowe's two days ago looking at the two brothers that do flipping houses on HGTV mm -hmm. or whatever. They had wallpaper that they had made. And now you just peel it off and stick it right on. Mm -hmm. It's not like you got Rental friendly. Yeah, and they said it comes off easily too, which I was like, that's cool because we just had to pull some wallpaper off and it was on for like 20 years and it didn't come off easily. Um, okay, so what's the dream for Robin's On Run? Is it going to get to be like a, a household name? You're going to have thousands of them. <laughs> You're going to have to only like open up stores in like cities that have Roan streets. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I like keeping it small. I, I, I like the idea of just a concentrate, concentration of local art and bringing people into the shop. And we have had so many new people to town come into the shop. Yeah. Um, and so it's just been fun to meet people. So I would like to keep it um, just, it feels cozy now. And that's, Small and intimate. yeah. Yeah, it is cozy. And I think yeah. you're a great connector of people and making friends and so I could see that just being a you know a yeah. space where your friends come by and see you and get stuff and, and even client like people who have I Lord. only know through the shop yeah and when they come back in I'm like oh haven't seen you in a while yeah. what are we doing today isn't that fun I yeah think that's it's so fun one of the best things about Johnson City because if we're in like a if you were in New York you may never see the same person ever no. again no but no. here we see everybody every day almost because mm -hmm. there's only like 20 people in Johnson City mm -hmm. Um, okay, so let's do a little speed round, fun round. Okay. Um, where, if you're going to get a cup of coffee, and I got you one this morning, where would you go, Lori? I'd probably go to Open Doors, because it's just right down from my house. Ah. And Meredith? I literally hate to say ditto, but. That's, yeah, ditto. I love Open ditto. Doors. Well, yeah. and we've had the Marians on the podcast. Okay. We love them a lot, so, uh. And got this got us this morning because it's it close. Don't it tell was Mike I'm very, sharing. very yummy. Okay. What is your favorite place to get a pizza? You can go first, Mary. Scratch, hands down. But, you know, they had a bumpy road since COVID. So Are I'm open? really hoping they open back up this season because I miss Scratch. Yeah. I miss Scratch. Maybe we could get Christian and Tyson to open it up. Okay. That'd be good. They make pizza. They could probably figure it out. How about a pizza for you? Oh, that's a tough one because I love pizza anywhere. Um, we used to love to go to everyone's. Oh, yeah. It's closed Everybody, up. Yeah, yeah, everybody's pizza. That, it's yeah. It didn't last long. great. Um, so, yeah, what we don't happened? have a go-to now. Do you know the story there? Don't Why? know. Yeah. They were from Asheville, and I think that they were hoping for it. Uh, I think they were from Asheville, so they didn't know the feel of Johnson City, so the location made it kind of oh. awkward. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. but they had the best pizza. They did have they had really good pizza. Okay, what's your favorite pizza, Meredith? Literally, scratch. Like, what are you going to get on it? Like, talk oh, we would say trust. The trust, and they would just go to town. And they're going to throw. They put oranges, mandarin oranges, mandarin oranges, basil, garlic, house cured pepperoni. I mean, oh, just no. all of it. It's crazy. If you're, if you work at Scratch, bring it back. <laughs> Come on back, Scratch. <laughs> if you're out there. That's right. Just for Meredith. We used to walk down there every we, Sunday yes. and get a pizza. See? Oh yeah, I miss that. Yeah, we, yeah. What's your what is your favorite? Pizza um, topic? I'm kind of a veggie girl. I like okay. you know mushrooms, onions, artichokes. Mm. You know, I love stuff. artichokes. Yeah, spinach. Okay, I like it. All right, let's say you guys are taking your husbands out on a date. <laughs> Since the ladies are here, um, where are you going to go on date night, Lori, with your husband? Well, our favorite place recently is Timber. Oh, yeah. We love Timber. That was fun. So. Have you done the tent? Timber in a tent? Timber in a tent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're still doing that. They did it during COVID. They were doing it during it COVID awesome. outside. Yeah. How about you? Cafe 111. Cafe 111. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was pretty definitive. Are you All like day sushi every... or? Well, can't we... I like the sushi, but if I'm going, I'm going in the evening. And so I might get their pad thai. Okay. Sushi or pad thai. Gotcha. Okay. Burgers. 
Just for the listeners who are like mm. it, like Mitch and I do. Timber has a really good burger. It does. Mm-hmm. They haven't had their burger, but that sounds delicious. We just got tapas when we went last time. So, how about you for a burger? Don't laugh. You don't eat burgers. Pal's Junior Burger. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's they're a good the, answer. They're the best. Cheese. With cheese, of course. Bacon, you can every throw once bacon in a while. On. Yeah, I'm with you. Pal's is the best. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's the it's unreal. Okay, all right. That was the speed round. Um, what are you excited about this spring? What's coming up at the shop? What are you got going on besides having an awesome? Well, harvest? I'm really excited about Lori. She's because her colors are so bright and bold mm-hmm. and she does a lot of fruit. So I'm using her art as the inspiration to kind of launch the shop into spring. Mm-hmm. So we're just we're just brightening it up. So we've got her and and uh, we do a featured artist that usually runs a month or two. So I like that. And then we're having a few Saturday events. Cool. Carly might be involved I in think one of those. This is happening, yes. Yes. So I'm just excited. Just fun ways to bring the community. Yeah, I'm in. excited too. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. yeah, thanks for bringing Revived over there for You're welcome. Carly's clothes. You're welcome. What are you excited about for spring, Miss Lori? Oh, probably the weather, which is getting me excited today, actually. Isn't it nice? Yeah. Yeah. I just love, yeah, I love spring. Yeah, I do too. It's one of my favorite seasons. Mm-hmm. So, um, what didn't I ask you that you'd like to share with our audience, Meredith? Oh, no. I don't know. What didn't you ask me? What didn't I ask you? Um, let me see. Which is your favorite child? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, yeah. So how about this? How can our listeners connect with you? Swing by the shop. Swing by the shop. Are you yes. on Instagram? I'm on Instagram. Robin's on Rome JC yeah. on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Are you on MySpace? What? You don't remember that? <laughs> oh, MySpace no. from Mm-mm. like 20 years no. ago? Okay. No. I think it's coming back. I'm still holding on to my oh, account. Okay. No, it's yeah. not coming back. No, the best thing is just pop in the shop and say Pop hi. in the shop. Pop in the shop. Which we did yesterday, and there you it's go. awesome. Yeah. And it's a good distraction for you because you're just <laughs> mid-frame. And there's the upstairs like framing, and then there's the downstairs like I didn't get socializing. to see the frame shop. That would be fun to see. Yeah, it's a mess. I would probably like to work on that sometime. Okay. Just Come volunteer. It would be fun to learn. I need to, to finish learn that. I really do. I need to finish it. But. Okay. Yeah. I could probably do that. Okay. <laughs> Lori, how can listeners connect with you? And Do you have like a website where they can see your art and that kind of stuff? I don't have a website, but I do have an Instagram account, l.norris.design. Nice. So they can go there and see my journey. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm going to go check it out. You yeah. should. Yeah. Stuff is really cool. And then there's an open house there's today, open house. tonight, today, tonight, from, from four, four to six, six mm-hmm. at the shop on mm-hmm. Roan Street mm-hmm. with the birds mm-hmm. and Meredith and Lori. It's going to be awesome. Fruit, birds, like fruit in the art. Fruit in the art. I don't know if I'll have. Oh, you we'll have some, fruit to eat. Yeah, there you go. Get some fruit to eat. I'm hoping I have a girl in um, Kingsport that does pottery for us, and she's madly whipping out some um, berry bowls, Ooh. pottery to have in time to have. Berry bowls full of more fruit. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It is it is a really a beautiful space. Like, I was just blown away. And so, yeah, if you want to come find pottery and art and framing, then Robin's on Rome's your place. And so, yeah, thanks for making Johnson City better uh-huh. by having a great local shop and supporting local people like Lori and coming on a podcast to support a local guy like me. I'm really excited for you and your venture. I'm Thank like, you. we're proud of you. Like Aww. Carly and I just drove away. I was like, Aww. that is just an awesome <laughs> shop. So good job. <laughs> Thank Meredith. you. Thank you. Yeah. And your art is beautiful. So Thank hopefully you. you'll Thank sell you. out on Friday and you'll have to just get busy. That's what I told her. I was like, you might have to re, uh, up. Yeah. yeah. Start painting. <laughs> That's right. Get busy. <laughs> Keep going. Which is it. Like, and I just saw all your stuff. I was like, well, obviously she's a full-time artist, but I didn't realize you had another job. So mm-hmm. We won't tell anybody. Okay. <laughs> Keep it secret, but she's got a side gig, side hustle, making art. All right. Um, for the last thing, what gets you fired up, Meredith? Other than coffee. Other than coffee. And good weather. And good weather. And good friends. These are all things to be fired up. About. Okay, all of those. All of those. And my family. And your They family. either fire me up or... <laughs> or fire you up. <laughs> How about you, Lori? What gets you fired up? What are you fired um, up about? Coffee, mm-hmm. family, friends, meeting new people meeting like new you people. today. So yes. this has been great. This has been great and easy and fun. So 
Thank you all for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having Thank us. you guys Thank for you guys. listening. I enjoyed our conversation. I'm excited for the open house to just go fantastically, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. So I'm hoping Carly and I can come by there and, and see you again. So until next time, I'm Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you want to make a move to Johnson City, if you want to move from Kingsport just down the road to here, I would love to help you do that. I'm going to help some friends do that soon, so that's exciting. Um, or if you'd like to invest in real estate, we do it all. Top to bottom, we'll manage your property all the way through. Um, thanks again for listening. Please share the episode with somebody, and they'll get to meet Meredith and Lori over it. So come see you on Robins on Roan. Have a great day.